Okay, hello everybody. Hope you're all doing well. Thank you again for your patience. I appreciate you all. And I want to give a big hello to Biz Woofer over on Rumble and Jeff Fields on Odyssey and everyone else who may be watching on those platforms. And hello, of course, to YouTube. Hope you're all doing well. Uh, hey, Triple Indy, thank you for your support. I appreciate you. Terry, thank you as well for your support. Armchair Mystic, something witchy, thank you as well for your continued support. Organic Brain, great to see you. Johnny Nevermind, great to see you. Tried, D, great to see you, my friend. Johnny, Prepper, Emil, Pepperami. I like that name. <laughs> Adam, hello. Welcome. Tommy, great to see you, brother. Thank you for helping out today. I appreciate that. Okay, so just as a reminder before we get started, this channel is for educational purposes only. And, or perhaps entertainment purposes only, depending on what the law would prefer. So, we could pick either one. And, um, so. Where is it? Nope. Oh, that's not working. Hold on. Always oh, something. There we go. Hello, everybody. So, um, today we're going to be diving into part two of the Michael Newton cover to cover case review and commentary of Memories of the Afterlife. We'll be going over life between lives, past life regression, re reincarnation, spirit guides, soul group, life scripts, and a bunch more. And uh, so we're going to dive right into the next case. Again, this is part two. If you just happen to run across this, there is a part one. You can find a playlist or check the video tab or the live stream tab or maybe content tab or video tab depending on what platform you're on to find the first one and just in case anyone else is interested i did do cover to cover commentaries on his other books as well uh, a year or so back destiny of souls and journey of souls okay so let's get rolling here looking forward to this and thank you for being here everybody three when Children Teach from the Grave By Bryn Blankenship, Wilmington, North Carolina Director of Membership and Lead Trainer for the Newton Institute Certified Hypnosis Instructor Specializing in Transpersonal Hypnosis Regression Candace hey, came for an Black LBL you. session following the death of her two young grandchildren. She was seeking understanding and peace regarding the tragic event. Hey, cutie. She already knew that we are eternal beings, but by being able to connect in such a profound way with her grandchildren, she was able to feel the eternal nature of our relationships, which for her helped lessen the pain. Knowing that their connection to one another transcends time and space brings healing to her aching heart. As I greeted Candace in the lobby of my office building, she smiled and shook my hand. I felt a sense of quiet strength and determination from her, which immediately caught my attention. Her beautiful hazel eyes looked at me through a veil of sadness that her smile could not completely hide. As we made our way to my office, Candace didn't waste time with small talk. She had come today seeking understanding and comfort following the death of her two young grandchildren in a car crash four months prior. A third grandchild survived. Daniel was ten years old, and Emma was just seven at the time of their passing. Candace was a devoted grandmother who found herself lost with them gone. She missed holding them, playing with them, and touching them. Daniel had short blonde hair, a warm smile, and friendly eyes. Like most boys his age, he was into sports, and his strong athletic build allowed him to excel at them. Candace and Daniel had been especially close. She described him as the kind of child who could sense that you were sad and find ways to make you smile. An incredibly loving and sensitive soul, Daniel was wise beyond his ten short years on this planet. Emma was Daniel's opposite in many ways. With long black hair outlining the pale, petite features of her face, little Emma's body was slight and tiny compared to Daniel's. She had a mischievous twinkle in her eye and could at times be described as a naughty little pixie. 
When she would get caught purposely hitting her older brother, she'd just laugh, claiming it was an accident. She laughed a lot, but there was something inconsolably sad about her. It seemed to get worse as the time of their death drew nearer. Candace's expression could not mask the pain she felt as she shared with me how they enjoyed spending time together biking, swimming, visiting the zoo, and watching movies. It really didn't matter what they did, as long as she and the children did it together. As Candace spoke, her eyes drew me in. Her eyes are those of an old soul, possessing depth and wisdom. Dealing with her grief showed an obvious heaviness that was gracefully carried by her fighting spirit. She wanted to understand and learn from it, to not be consumed by the deep sadness that caused her to reach for a glass of wine more often than she would prefer. She knew this wasn't the answer. The nights were the hardest. They grew darker, and the pain worsened. We began the past life regression in preparation for the LBL session that would take place in a few days. Candace easily regressed to a past life as a native hunter with beautiful black hair, wearing only leather skins and a strap with a holder for his arrows. In this lifetime, Candace was a male named Sequana, meaning blessed. Sequana spent his days and nights in the forest in a time before machines, boats, and the white people. He was gifted with the ability to get so close to the animals that they didn't even see him. He remarked, I don't eat the animals, but rather walk with them and get close to the doe to feel her beauty. Food is easy. It's just there. Leaves, berries, sorry, sorry water, about that. fruits and trees, fish. Bears show us honey. Preferring the seclusion... I apologize. Let me just back it up a minute. Um, I got all sorts of flustered here for a second, <laughs> and I kept hitting things. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right, here we go. Jeez. Three. Bad. When children teach today. from the grave, roots and trees, fish, just rather walk with them and get close to the doe to feel her beauty. Food is easy. It's just there. Leaves, berries, water, fruits and trees, Fish? Bears show us honey. Preferring the seclusion of his cave-like place, his medicine was to live away from the tribe and among the animals in the forest. My teachers are the spirits, he explained. I walk, I feel the trees, plants, we talk. And the animals, we talk. I shift my being to become them and learn their secrets, learn their medicine. Quickly, the journey carried us to a later time in Sequana's life. I am old now, but not ancient. My hair, not so black. My body, not so strong. I have the magic and the medicine. I love the heat from the fire and sit by it and smell the smoke. Women have come to me for my strength to give them children, but not to stay. My children are precious, desired, but I stay alone. Upon reflection, Sequana admitted that it was his mistake being alone, because there was nowhere for his learning to go, no one to pass it on to. The women of the tribe would come to Sequana when they needed him to heal and for strength, but there was no other relationship between them. Many individuals whom Sequana recognizes also play significant roles in Candace's current life. His father, Jenequa, who has enormous energy, had been the tribal leader, Jenequa taught Sequana and his twin brother how to work with the energy and to carry it for the tribe. He is now incarnated as Candace's father. His spirit now comes to her to hold her hand and offer comfort. Sequ so the spirit's coming to hold her hand and provide her comfort. And doing the kind of duties for the tribe, the collective, the hive mind a few minutes, serves as his link to the people and shares his same powers. As children, they played together with the nature spirits, the sun, the moon, and the clouds. He enjoys being around people, while Sequana prefers solitude. This twin brother is again a brother who is instrumental in Candace's life today, offering love, support, and strength. He helps her to hold the energy for the family during this difficult and tragic time. We discover holding the energy is a skill that Candace also possesses and is important to be drawn upon now. As Sequana's life moves to an end, he is very old. I need to rest. It's harder to breathe, too. 
They have all gone. It's my time now. Yeah, your time to get sucked back into the system. He finds his spirit standing outside of his body. I just shake free from my body. I have my strength again. I know where I am going. At the crossover into the spirit world, Sequana, as Candace in her most immediate past life, is greeted by loved ones, both human and animal. So, ex you know, again, it's the same playbook every single time throughout many of these experiencer types. Again, it's not just past life, regressions, life between lives. It's, it's NDEs, it's breakthrough trips, after-death communication, out-of-body experiences in general. Um, it just goes on and on and on, and it's the same old thing. You, we, we, that's the beauty of being able to research this topic is that the patterns are so in our face. What do we have? We have the family and we have pets ready and waiting to usher her in or yank her in to another incarnation. At the crossover into the spirit world, Sequana, as Candace in her most immediate past life, is greeted by loved ones, both human and animal. He is enveloped in a blue light radiating from the heart of centered darkness. This light is a deep, strong color, like a gem that gets brighter and brighter. It moves and has sound, texture, and weight. It is like a solid light. It washes off all of the sticky parts, rejuvenating his spirit body from the heaviness of his earthly body. This native life gave Sequana the opportunity... Okay, so the rejuvenating part is another thing that we've talked about. It, you don't see it all that often... In other experiencer types, with the exception of uh, some NDEs, where there's like a rejuvenation. But even that's not all that common, but it does appear. But in the um, uh, Life Between Lives accounts, uh, we've heard it quite a few times, where it's like almost like a, like a rest stop, an area for your essence to be rejuvenated and forget where the hell you just came from and then what happens you end up saying oh well you know i've had my break or you don't end up saying someone comes probably knocking at your door which usually is the case there's always someone kind of involved with trying to get you back down here you have your your rest you relax and then boom you know knock at the door Hey, uh, you know, you got to do your mission. You know, you got to work on this, got to work on that. And it starts all over again. So to speak, because it allowed for spiritual growth while having his basic survival needs met. It was about feeling the earth and knowing its souls and to just feel the joy of the heat of the sun and the cool of the rain. Balance. Learning to be of the earth gave him the knowledge of the plants and the medicines for later when he would be a healer. I have a list of things I need to be, so this was like class for the next lives. There I made the choice it. to be alone this life. There you have it. Same thing. This is like class for the next life. I mean, really, it is. think about the horrors that you come from here where you have to deal with school and, and, and all this endless monotonous garbage, and then you cross over and... Oh, okay, you've rested now. Okay, time time to go to school. And then right back down to Earth. Ugh. Ugh. Just... Ugh. I made the choice to be alone this life, but I'm learning that every choice is not the right choice. I will do it differently the next time. Revisiting this life yeah. gave Candace access to this dormant reservoir of strength so necessary to carry her through this crucial time. See, she's accessing, and I'm sorry for stopping so much, but she's accessing a, a dormant energy that's basically reviving her, building her up. That is the matrix, making sure that that is facilitated. So necessary to carry her through this crucial time. Following the death of her grandchildren, it was essential to find the balance that she so desperately needed now. Clarity and unity of purpose would keep her energies from being scattered. 
Before the session came to a close, Candace was advised by her guides that there was too much energy in her body and it needed to be utilized in a better way. Yeah, yeah. This was why let, she was having trouble sleeping. She was told to utilize the dream time and to eliminate the wine. Relying on wine took her further away from her purpose in experiencing these events. She was reminded of the importance of fully staying in the body, spirit, and energy of all that is life. She must come all the way into it and experience the whole of it. Candace was given a lot to digest on this day. As she left my office, I noticed there was lightness to her presence. She seemed introspective yet relaxed after this intense session. I would see her again in a few days for the LBL. When Candace arrived for her Life Between Lives session, we wasted no time in getting started. She easily regressed to childhood and into the womb. In her soul state, Candace described the womb as kind of like a waiting room. I'm feeling parts of me sliding into the edges. I'm upside down, can hear my mother's heartbeat that feels like a pulse and then ripples and flows. I joined up with the fetus at seven months and I'm getting used to being in the body. I stay inside, but go out and look around sometimes. My Okay, this is something, um, the question kind of has come up a few times and I, I've meant, I've gone over it, but uh, for anyone that was curious, th there's, there's really no rhyme or reason as to when someone, when your essence, you know, when your transformation from the astral into the womb occurs. And just like we heard in this case, and it's been mentioned in, a number of other cases have gone over in past streams uh, in regards to life between lives uh, and pre-birth memories. Some of them can, uh, they can come down early and be in the womb, you know, eh, like one to three months at that period. But then there are some, I think the one we just heard, she said, what, seven months. And, Another big narrative that's out there is that we can come down, you know, hang in the womb and then go exploring, like in the the lower astral of the earth realm, I guess, you know. Um, and that's, again, another data point that pops up. But, you know, it's not like it's discussed every case, but it's, it's enough out there where um, we basically can go running around before we're born into the physical completely and that can vary individual to individual i think even christian uh sunberg one of the early pre-birth memories i think he even might have mentioned that i'm not 100 percent sure but i think he did too and then there's definitely some in the in the newton the other newton commentaries i've done rain this body is female I like incarnating as male, but I need to try to be softer, yet strong. In my current life, I knew I was going to be a different kind of female. This one is full of challenge. I need the emotions. Challenges are obstacles that make it hard to stay on course. Nothing easy here. Editor's Note Souls are perfectly capable of leaving sleeping babies, adults, or patients in a coma for a while to roam around, perhaps visiting old haunts before returning. However, they always leave a portion of their energy behind for emergencies. Crossing into the spirit world after her past life, my client reports, There are huge columns of light. One of the columns is me, but it seems to have no boundaries. I have a separate awareness, but not a separate being now as I merge with this light and join to it. I am this light. She yeah, is greeted so by her spirit guides, Gabrielle and Michael, with the who light. call her Isla. Have no problem merging with the light. It's me, but it seems to have no boundaries. I have a separate awareness, but not a separate being now as I merge with this light and join to it. I am this light. She is greeted by her spirit guides, Gabrielle and Michael, who call her Isla. This is Candace's immortal soul name. Gabrielle is a pure gold color, surrounded by rich purples, pulsating and flowing with pure love. 
Michael, her senior guide, has dark and glowing colors with the deepest of violets, displaying a contrast both of light and of solidity. Isla describes herself as having a bluish tone, not as deep as Michael's. Isla moves to a huge temple with stone floors, then into a large library with many levels. She informs me that she needs to register that she's here before beginning the review of meaningful past life experiences. As she stops to do this, she explains, What we build on the earth is a pale imitation of what we remember from here. I put all of the pieces in the big binder. Editor's Note Typically, souls find their permanent records of past life accomplishments and shortcomings stored in places resembling earthly libraries. The review begins. Her guides emphasize to her the value of spending time not only touching the earth, but interacting with others. Isla, it seems, had experienced other past lives that also involved isolation and a tendency for her to seek solitude. Isla explains that, Although I knew my plants, trees, animals, and birds from these lives, I needed to learn about individuals, their names, and to start having relationships with them. I don't study here right now, Isla mentions. I'm just depositing information that I learned for a future time in the library. It's like charging myself by filling up on the details of my other lives. With some bodies, it's more difficult to maintain soul identity, and there are other earthly lifetimes that are easier where I come to relax a bit. Isla explains that in recent lives, she has not brought a lot of energy into her bodies, but as Candace, she brought almost all of her energy, knowing what was potentially in store. After finishing the review in this spiritual library, Isla moves through the courtyard to a large bouquet of energy where her soul grew. All right, so did you hear that she she knew what was in store for her? But the 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 big problem is the interaction, right? The the interaction needs to be cut off at the knees at the time of natural death. Because all this does is open up a can of worms to be messing with this stuff, to be influenced by this stuff. Why is she why is everybody just so complacent and so just, oh, go with the flow, no big deal, you know, and so trusting? And it definitely has to do with the continuity of familiarity between both worlds. That's the Earth realm and the astral realms, uh, how they blend in with one another, how they, they feed off of our emotions, our desire to be with our soul group, um, Quote unquote teachers, the council, and, and, and resolve karma, and on and on and on. It's the endless illusion of BS that we keep falling for. So, the key thing is, is for us to shut that down. Don't allow it to come in at all when we're leaving here. Finishing the review in this spiritual library, Isla moves through the courtyard to a large bouquet of energy where her soul group has gathered. She explains that. They are all gathered together. Since I am the elder in our soul family, when I come home, we all spread out. Stepping into the energy, she recognizes various family members. There are lines of connectivity with the soul group that wind from each one of us to each other. Sometimes the lines are lit, and sometimes not. Editor's Note Here's my editor's note. Are those like, you know, etheric overlays, etheric connections that are kind of fastened to us? And as a result, um, we feel connected or familiar with them and are more easily susceptible to brainwashing and accepting the charade? That's kind of what I think is going on. Here's Newton's editor's note, though. Sometimes not. Editor's note. While we have magnetic grid lines on Earth, cluster groups of souls also have specific vibrational concentrations of energy, rather like homing beacon locators. So I asked Isla to find the line that led to her grandchildren Daniel and Emma. She does, and they come forward, Emma first, followed by Daniel. Emma didn't have much to say. We are told Emma was not part of Candace's main soul group, therefore she is not a companion soul like Daniel, but rather from an affiliated group. This was the reason the line to Emma was not as brightly lit as Daniel's. 
She loved Emma, but the connection to Daniel was much stronger. Next, Daniel appears. His energy is big and loving. He embraces Isla slash Candace with his presence. Daniel informs Candace that he didn't mean to hurt her by leaving, and he likes knowing the importance he bears in her heart. She is comforted knowing he is happy now in his eternal home. He is learning too, and plans are being made for his next life. As souls, both Daniel and Emma volunteered in advance of this incarnation to teach the various family members through their leaving so early in life. Both souls apparently joined their human bodies knowing there was a high probability of violent deaths at a young age. Candace also joined with the same human family to experience the grief that followed. For Candace, she is karmically overcoming her tendencies toward isolation and solitude in past lives, as had happened with Sequana, for whom it could be argued that he had devalued family in favor of self-absorption. In this life, she must be strong and help her family pull together to work through the emotions of losing the children. Editor's Note The possibilities and probabilities of events happening in our lives, due to karmic influences, may be difficult to unravel, because the laws of karma seem to favor elements of determinism in our existence on Earth to the detriment of free will. Yes, yes, keep listening. ...out by LBL Research. While souls volunteer for karmic assignments in the life selection room before the next life, there is always room for free will choices and even a change in direction with upcoming events in life. In this case... There was evidently a high potential of both children dying in a car crash at a given moment in time. However, there can be variables in this scenario. If the crash had not been quite so severe, one or both children might have survived. Perhaps their parents could have arrived at the street junction just before or just after the crash, or they might have decided at the last minute not to get into the car at all. After a series... Okay, and see where look i think he's he's obviously right and in my opinion wrong because information's being left out um i think it's it's very difficult to veer off of your life script it's not impossible of course cuz you still have the ability to make a decision um but it doesn't mean that just because you make a decision to dodge something like a car, like a car accident, car wreck, that is scheduled essentially in your life script. It doesn't mean that it's not going to fulfill itself maybe the day after or the week after or the month after. Um, one of the books that I talked about, um, well, I'm trying to think of the name of it. It's an old book. I want to say it's like from the late 1800s, early 1900s. There are some cases in there um, where there's like a strong premonition, intuition about, you know, not doing this, not doing that. And that's something that does help someone potentially avoid getting into something like car wreck. Um, there was a really interesting case and I'll try to dig up the book, uh, when we come, you know, during break, but, um, in the case, it talks about how, uh, this guy just knew he was going to die, but he was young. He was, I think like in his fifties, maybe, maybe mid forties, something. Eh, don't quote me on that though. Anyways, he's on vacation, I think in Italy with his wife and they got a nice room with a balcony and just boom. All of a sudden, he tells his wife, I'm going to die. I know I'm going to die and I'm going to die here at this date and such and such a time. And he's so convinced that it's going to happen that he even like calls back uh, his lawyer back at home, gets papers drawn up and signed and all that so that the wife and the, and the will is all set up. And... So the day comes and he goes out of his way to make sure that he's not on the balcony where apparently he was supposed to die. And he did that for multiple days in a row. And so a few days go by or however many, maybe a week, something like that while they're on vacation. And I think it was, you know, whatever time period it was, there was, there was a gap 
where, you know, essentially he was supposed to die in one day, but well, he kept going like out to breakfast and dinner and <laughs> avoiding the room at all costs and not going to the balcony. Anyways, in the end, he, he ends up dying anyways. And he knew it and it happened. And so it's just an interesting thing, right? I think with death, it's a, it's a little different than something like a, a car accident, perhaps. But maybe not. I, I don't know. Um, anyways, uh, there's a lot of interesting stuff when it comes to premonitions and intuition about dodging things. But the last thing I'll say on this is I think in terms of free will and, and making more lucid decisions, the more awakened you are, the more connected you are with yourself, uh, your surroundings, and in my opinion, kind of realizing the illusion that is this place, the more able you are to control your destiny or your, your path or forge your own path that veers off from the life script. I think until someone, you know, reaches that point, I think it's difficult. I mean, and, and to be honest, I'm basing it off of my life experience. I can't obviously speak for others, but I'd be interested to really hear what you all have to say in the chat about this um, or in the comment section if you're watching the replay. You know, what do you think? I mean, if you look back at your life, even if you had like a, a spiritual component to you, a, uh, a rebel uh, attitude, a rebel kind of <laughs> essence uh, throughout your time here, even then, keeping that in mind, do you, do you feel that you were still like kind of dronish to the matrix and susceptible to more susceptible to falling into something like a like a life script uh, event such as a car wreck? I don't know. I mean, to me, uh, you can still have that intuitive, you know, that firm inner knowing, like, you know, to, to take a different road than you usually do to work because something's telling you not to do that. But uh, in the end, I think the, the, the bulk of the life script kind of overpowers our free will because we're asleep. We're not really is in tune with our surroundings and everything else. And that of course has everything to do with this whole experience that the human body and the governor and the, the limitations or as Dan calls it, the reducing valve, <laughs> you know, I mean, that just prevents us from connecting with our true self. So anyways, feel free to, to drop what you, your thoughts in the chat. I'm really interested to, to hear it. By choice or by circumstance. The departed children are teaching Candace to come out of her solitude and to bring forth skills she's developed from previous lives that will help her now to unify her family. Tragedy can unite or it can divide. She can use what she's learned to help the family heal. By remembering the children through stories and pictures, she can let them know it's okay to feel loss, but also remind them that one day they will all be together again. Children are the hope for our future. When a life is cut short, there is a strong impact on those who love the child. Those left behind are given an opportunity for spiritual growth. Despite their tiny bodies, children are powerful healers. Although Daniel's earthly body was that of a child, his spiritual body is no longer restricted by the physical body. He is a very big and powerful soul. Candace believed that we are eternal, but losing her grandchildren had tested her beliefs. Experiencing Daniel's big energy now helps her to know that Daniel's and Emma's spirit goes on. Daniel is teaching Candace to keep her heart open. Life must go on, and she must be strong for her remaining grandchild, their surviving sister, who really needs her now. Editor's Note The author of this story later advised me that Candace sat for a month with the surviving child, as the little girl's condition went from critical to stable. When she was finally told that her brother and sister had been killed, she insisted, No, they're standing right there, and pointed to the foot of her hospital bed. She was able to see and communicate with them long after the crash, as they provided comfort for her. It is believed that she continues to do so even now, 
but just does not talk about it anymore to the adults in her life, because it is too painful for them. The ability of children to see and talk to entities from the other side is quite remarkable. The effect of the tremendous exchange of healing energy between Candace and her loved ones was visible on her face. Palpable and transformative, it filled the room. Its healing properties restored her aching heart. Candace's face brightened as tears of joy streamed from her eyes. My eyes welled up too, touched by what I had witnessed. The power of spiritual regression in understanding karma in our lives is enormous. Surprisingly, we didn't spend a great deal of time talking with the two grandchildren during the session. The powerful exchange went on for a while as its loving vibration lifted the heaviness from her being. This was more beneficial than any words could ever be. Her guides instructed her to take time at home to sit quietly to follow the breathing into that quiet space. Visual yeah, follow the breathing into that quiet space, but... You know, her guides are chirping in her ear, telling her what to do. And, well, I wonder who's going to show up. Let's see. Let's roll out the, the brothers, the sisters, the family, the spirit guides. She's almost ready to go. Come on, chop, chop. Got to get her with us. Space. Visualize the lights coming, erasing the darkness, and lifting the pain. It was then time for Isla to go before her council of elders. Uh -oh. These all-knowing beings are huge and luminescent. These are the ones who send me to incarnate, she informed me. See, there's further confirmation. These are the ones that send me to in reincarnate or reincarnate, whatever the case may be, right? <laughs> Chances are it's reincarnate. <laughs> I don't think many are here for their first rodeo. But, you know, there, there's always a first time when we get in here, right? Um, but, yeah, it's it's common. You have the Council of Elders, you have the Guides, and you have the Soul Group. It's like the trifecta of deception that uh, keeps us coming back. And the and the Council is the worst. Um, it's it's like uh, all this, there's always this, like, high-pressure, not always, but a lot, it's like a, it's like a pressure situation, um, and then most of the time someone will leave the council and then start going and picking out their life, uh, their, their next incarnation, their life script with, uh, a teacher guide, whatever. Sometimes even the council themselves, but you know, depends. Usually it's a teacher or guide though. And are here to bring enlightenment. Oh yeah. Such a, there so are seven enlightening. Climbing up a mountain, she was led to a beautiful crystal building surrounded by a deep pool of emerald green water. Isla went inside the gates to where her council awaited her arrival. She stood before them as they complimented her on her progress through the hardships of her current life. They discussed how the lesson of sadness has held her back, telling her to go beyond the sad and to see the truth about baby's passing. Ah. This would help her and her grieving family. The elders reassure Isla that it is understandable to have despair sometimes, but she must move beyond it. Working through the energy and connecting with the light will lift her and those around her, making <laughs> things different. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, working through things and working with the light will help her get her through this, you know, all this. And, and, and there's such a disconnect, all right? Think about it. You're, uh, I know I'm sorry for pausing it so much, but this one is just loaded. Um, and there's only a few more minutes in this one anyways. But uh, anyways, it's, it's just baffling, right? Because you can see how the memory wipe is in full effect in this scenario. Okay. And in almost any scenario, I, I see they're, they're, I just do not see it uh, not presenting itself all the time because it's consistently there, not just as um, a human, but in the astral as well because you, because you have such a disconnect between from the human experience in the astral and you know having these interactions and what have you, you're... You're, you don't have the pain. You don't have the suffering. You may have a, 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 an understanding 
a, a peppered understanding about what that may be because obviously there's the whole life script involved, the soul group involved, so they, they, they need that connection there on some level. But think about it. You're twiddling your thumbs and things are a lot easier in the astral than they are down here. And then once you get here, it's like, whoa. You know, again, limited perception, uh, memory wipes, uh, uh, having to grow up and, and, and be indoctrinated through everything. I mean, it's, it's so easy to see it differently outside of the human body before coming here than it is once you're here. <laughs> and that's what this whole system banks on. It banks on us not getting there. And, and, and having that disconnect, it, it's, it's so diabolical and genius. I, again, I hate to give it credit, but it's so ridiculously diabolical. <laughs> and um, oh, it's like they've thought of everything. If, 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 you, if you have the disconnect from the pain, the suffering, and all, and all this stuff of the human experience, then it's so much easier to manipulate being in dream time feeds the soul. Balance is needed between work and emotion. She must learn not to get lost in emotion or work in order to stay on track. This, too, is part of the lesson for Candace. Alana, one member of the council who has been with Isla for many lifetimes, informs Candace that the purpose of Daniel and Emma leaving held different lessons for each family member. Candace's role is that of carrying the light and as comforter. The loss she has experienced will act to create more depth in relationships, a sort of crash course in learning about people and personalities. The qualities of gentleness and kindness that she's developed through lifetimes of living with the animals and in nature bear significance now. She is to put out reminders of the children to the family to show them that although the children are not in a body, they are not really gone. Just as her father's spirit is able to come to her, they come too. Daniel's spirit often comes with reminders to help them grow from his passing. Yeah, help them grow from your 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 loved one's demise. Again, so easy to paint it in such a way when one individual is suffering in the matrix and the human experience, and then the other one doesn't have any of those any of that baggage whatsoever. And then what is the Matrix doing? It's, you know, sending these transmissions to, to kind of ease the mind of someone. But come on. Come on. Just to help them grow from his passing. As the LBL session concluded, a path was opened for Candace to return to the spirit world to visit the council whenever she needed. Oh, boy. They instructed that she must remember to come and that she can do this on her own now. Our session ended there. When Candace arose from the timeless elasticity of the between life state, it was late in the afternoon. What had felt like a few minutes for her had actually been several hours, as we had started early that morning. I was honored to have been part of such an incredible experience. Something had shifted, for her and for me. What, only time would tell. In the months since her LBL session, Candace has found relief from the tight grip of continuous pain that had held her. When I met with her to write this story, she looked good. She was smiling and happy, without the sadness in her eyes the first time we met. She shared, After the children died, I found myself lost, without the ability to connect with my understanding of the universe, with my center, my soul, my heart. My time in LBL reestablished that connection. I found a sense of joy, momentary and transient, but peace and joy again after my session. It was not that I needed to be reminded of our eternal existence, but that I needed to feel and experience it, to break through the veil of pain that hid my soul from me. Candace has had contact with the spirits of her grandchildren since they died, even before the LBL. She explained that the difference now is that we continue our relationship in a better way. My understanding of the eternal nature of our relationships has lessened the pain of being without them. She is able to heal through it rather than be restricted by it. And her meditations are deeper now. It is easier getting into them and staying there. 
She also commented that pictures taken of Daniel and Emma during the last few months of their lives showed a distant look in their eyes. It's as if they knew they would be saying goodbye soon. Her heart is still mending, but Candace can now access that place in her heart and soul where pain is understood and modified, where healing begins. I know we will dance together again, she says. This helps make a tragic situation more bearable. Okay, so just throwing this up as a way to do the timestamps. Uh, it's a way to break things up just for a moment. So uh, that is, I believe, the third or fourth case we went over. Uh, talk about a doozy, right? It really, um, a loaded, loaded case. So um, anyways, we're going to go into the next one. Hope you enjoyed that case and uh we will be moving along so all right so there we go four completing okay, the jigsaw four. puzzle by martin richardson oxfordshire england specialist in hypnotic regression hypnotherapy research and in helping clients change themselves when compiling a jigsaw puzzle two elements are required all the relevant pieces, in combination with the ability to bring them together and complete the picture. Danny came to experience LBL, seeking a better understanding of herself and her place in the grand scheme of life. She wished to identify the major players in her soul group, the nature of the work they do together, and to recognize and get to know her spirit guide, the teacher of this soul group. Her thirst for understanding included the desire to check her progress on her soul path, to establish her direction, and to discover anything she should be doing to improve her learning. The preparatory past life regression, PLR sessions, created, in Danny's own words, the pieces of the jigsaw. Two ensuing Life Between Lives, LBL sessions, allowed that jigsaw to be completed and answered many of Danny's questions. This story is all about Danny and her jigsaw puzzle building. Danny's past life experiences revealed that key souls are indeed interacting through different roles, and this key learning element forms a crucial part of her soul development. First, Danny was regressed back to Wales in the late 19th century as Sarah. The souls of her father, husband, and children in this life were found to be members of Danny's soul cluster group, whose incarnated lives are intertwined with her own. For instance, Sarah's daughter Flora is her sister Lara today. While it was a hard life, Sarah had profound family relationships that resulted in Danny's first jigsaw piece, that of her discovery of the main lesson from that life, love and patience. The next incarnation took place soon afterwards in England as a girl named Joy, and again we learned about the active role of Danny's soul group members. Her primary soulmate was her husband, then as well as today, Kevin. Joy died rather young, at the age of fifty, of a heart attack. But from her family she learned trust, and that happiness can be acquired from simplicity. This past life lesson provided Danny with her next jigsaw piece. Danny then regressed to the very first life she had experienced with the soul of Jeremiah, a family. Oh, here we go. Good old Jeremiah. Life she had experienced with the soul of Jeremiah, a family friend with whom she has a close affinity today. She returned to the time of the Roman Empire. In Rome, Danny was a man called Manas who made and sold clay pots for storage. At the age of twenty-five, Manas lived just outside the city with Leah, the love of his life, family friend Jeremiah today. As Manas moved forward to the next significant event in this lifetime, he found himself holding Leah, who was distraught at the loss of their child. Moving forward again, they now had two children, one of them Danny's current sister, Lara. Forward again to the next memory, an encounter with a large crowd, shouting and jeering, 
as slaves were given their freedom. Here there was a healer called Samson, her aunt in this life, who used herbs to heal. During the next significant memory, Manus experienced the time his soul left his body. He was aged fifty-nine, alone, thin, sad, and had just fallen in the street, with no one offering him any assistance. Manus had long since left Leah and the children in poverty, and he did not want to die without letting Leah know how sorry he was for her poor treatment. Jigsaw Puzzle Number Three Danny discovered that as Manus, she was too selfish. She didn't care about people and lived purely for pleasure. The lesson was self-awareness, to show true feelings, and also the realization of the need to share oneself. As her LBL facilitator, I felt it important that Danny experience the next life she had shared with this significant soul, known today as Jeremiah. She went back again to find herself as a female named Lita, living in Greece. In this life, Jeremiah was her brother Alta, and during the first memory, Lita was aged twenty-two, pregnant and hiding from soldiers. She was inundated with flashing metal from the soldiers' breastplates, helmets with feather plumes and lots of noise. She recalled being told to wait here. The soldiers eventually departed, forcefully taking with them her husband and leaving Lita, Alta, current friend Jeremiah, and her mother, close friend Nikki today, to flee the island of Rhodes. Moving forward in time, she recalled living in a simple home with a daughter of just two years of age, son George today. Alta was, in truth, her brother, but none of their community was aware of this. Alta and Leah were accepted as a couple and lived a happy life on their rural property. Moving forward in time again to Lita's late thirties, the next scene revealed another child, clearly part of the family but not her own. The child, her aunt in this life, had a burned, disfigured face and walked with a limp. Her parents had died, and in Lita's memory, no one but us would have her. As we moved forward in time once more, Lita reported that Alta could not breathe and was feeling a weight on his chest. Caring for him, Lita shed many tears as he slipped away from her and died. Lita's own life ended when she took a fall and found herself ready to die and to be with her beloved Alta, Jeremiah today, once more. Another jigsaw piece, The Lesson of Love. Lita loved Alta, and she loved both her girls equally. She also learned compassion. Always with the love. Always with the love. Uh, you know, lesson of, comp lesson of compassion, love. And it could be the polar opposite, too. It could be, you know, anger, hate, you know, really, really bad stuff. It's like, uh, you know, how long are you going to work on this stuff for? From, uh, uh, like, the most limited experience... Uh, an eternal, true essence being can have. This series of past life experiences illustrates that groups of souls incarnate together repeatedly, playing different roles in order to achieve important life objectives and to help each other. For example, Danny senses this strongly in her close soul connection with Jeremiah, who today is a dear friend she rarely sees, but who has in past lives played very different roles as her partner, brother, and lover. With this overview, Danny was able to make comparisons with and understandings about her relationships in her current life. But, she wondered, how do these souls relate to each other in the spirit world between lives, and have the lessons learned from past lives been recognized and absorbed into her current life? Danny turned to LBL therapy to seek the answers and we began the first of two such sessions. Editor's Note The dynamics of soul-group interaction and the assumption of various supporting roles in the physical lives between group members is a vital part of spiritual regression therapy. For a client trying to understand the meaning of their current life 
and the lessons to be learned. It is very revealing to discover the souls of your friends and relatives in many bodies who have incarnated together with you for such long spans of time on earth. The entry into hypnosis was slow, and Annie reached a deep level. We had worked together many times before, and I already knew her to be an excellent hypnosis subject. In the past life that preceded entry into the spirit world, she was age nineteen, living near Canterbury, England, and about to marry Terence, husband Kevin, today. Moving forward to the end of that life, she was age fifty-four and alone, struggling for breath and dying just as her husband found her. This was not a very hard life. However, its lessons were significant, as we discover with Danny as she enters the between lives state. She is met by her guide, Tian, hmm. who features both male and female sides, stern and compassionate, respectively. She has little choice. She has to visit what she calls her panel first, also frequently called the Council the of council, Elders. Yeah. On the way, Tian asks if she feels she has put enough effort into that life. She remembers she had been expected to... Hey, remember, this is a system you cannot please. To, you know, did I put enough into this life? Hmm. Better consult with the council. Or the board, or whatever they call it. Enough ...effort into that life. She remembers she had been expected to put more in, but she didn't. She just coasted. All right, so since she just coasted, violation... You have to reincarnate 200 more times just to make up for your misdeeds. Danny is standing outside huge wooden doors and finds these will not open until there is a sense that she has had enough time to consider her actions in her last life in order to better understand it. When she does enter, her panel appears to be strangely unfamiliar at first. Danny would learn that we can be the co-creators of uncertainty with our first visual spiritual images of new scenes. As Danny, she must learn to see beyond what she initially fears. Artificial illusions, as masks, may be removed by courage for greater clarity. She finds herself in front of the panel, but lower. Looking up, she knows that the entities are not what they appear to be. Inquiring of her guide, she is told, You will see what you expect to see. If you expect to see something fearful, then you will. She is asked to be still and to trust. Soon. Okay, so what do we have there? We have an open admission that piggybacks off of other data that we go over, and that's the customization of everything. The system records every single minute, every single second of every single minute, of every single hour, day, week, month, year, from cradle to grave, and that is used to come up with and formulate a plan of attack, basically, to manipulate based off of that information that was customized from what I suspect to be some big grand uh, artificial intelligence type situation, some sort of system that sifts through all this data and presents you with a certain scenario that you're more apt to fall for. So, uh, yet again, we have the customization uh, being admitted in, uh, in experiencer data. What you expect to see. If you expect to see something fearful, then you will. She is asked to be still and to trust. Soon, the yeah, panel appears trust. as it normally does with seven members in total. Editor's Note I suspect that Danny's initial visualization of her council members appearing as animals was by design. There is a symbolic overtone of negative transmigration here. Indeed, we are told that if you expect to see something fearful, you will. There seems to be an expectation by Danny of some sort of punishment that feeds into Indian mythological dogma of reduction in rank to lower forms of life in future incarnations, because she did not live up to her potential in the last life. However, listeners should be aware that often orientation by a personal spirit guide 
will initially address the soul's primary concerns of the life just lived after re-entry into the spirit world. Oh, it sure will. During the telepathic communication with her panel, she reports, I feel that I wasted time and was too quick to judge others. I didn't use the life in the way in which it could have been used. I didn't make it what it could have been. She continues, I didn't really understand how I could make it different. I was lazy. I just took what came my way. I could have been a force for good in my community. But I didn't join in. I stood separate. The potential for healing within me didn't have a chance to show itself, even with my own children. I could have shared my inner knowledge with them. She concludes... So what? It, so this is the fear, guilt, shame matrix. This is shame. My inner knowledge with them. She concludes, I didn't use the life as I could have done. It could have been meaningful, and it doesn't matter how long life is. Making meaningful connections with other people multiplies on itself. Danny's jigsaw puzzle was now growing and was displayed to her with considerable relevance to her current life. The past lives she remembered had given her incredible resources, which she had not used or developed in her last life, but each one also bore significance in relation to her current life. As this Between Lives visit progressed, her panel symbolically showed her a flower, a beautiful rose opening up one petal at a time. Danny reported, I'm opening up bit by bit, beginning to understand, beginning to show my beauty like a ripening flower. I am on that journey, beginning to understand and to glimpse what the flower could look like, what I could be. I am being given impressions of what I can truly be. If the flower receives the sun and water it needs, it will blossom accordingly. It has to be fed appropriately, too, just as I have to focus on what I need in order to achieve that understanding. Oh, they'll feed on it, right. Danny then reported on the discussion and feedback relating to her current life. I have to be more focused this time around. I am being told that just trying to be is not good enough. I actually have to do and not just try to do. I'm kind of sloppy in how I do things. I now know I have to give everything 100% of myself and do everything with intent. If I fix my intention, I have to follow it through. This relates to healing. Okay, so this is, this is an open admission, even though it's in the context of the Matrix, it's showing you the power that your intention yields. Just think about the possibilities that you can bring to the forefront of your own essence by driving your intention as a creator being if you don't interact with this stuff, right? Don't get lost in, in the shuffle. Don't get lost in the sensory addiction, the sensory experience, the soul group, the council, and blah, 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 all this stuff, right? This is telling you, point blank, your intention is king. And that's what we talk about constantly on this channel. It's, it's so important to, to get there because... Nothing can stop you. Nothing can keep you here. Nothing can hold you here. And your intention is everything. And this is, you know, see, it's not like this is just a one-off. We see it constantly. So, uh, and then, of course, you can prove it to yourself by going outside the potty and seeing just how real your intention is and how powerful you really are. So... Just it's your innate abilities. It's not even not even necessarily power. It's just that we've been knocked down so many levels while here to make it feel like we don't have power or creator being abilities that we get lost. We doubt ourselves. We um, are trained to not realize our innate true essence abilities. This relates to healing, mainly to healing. It is a gift I have. I have to build on that and not just fall back on it. The intuition is the first step, but the reason I have a brain is to take this further. It is not just about what I am being taught. 
It's about how I can apply myself using that teaching. Having made this discovery, Danny ventured to her soul group and met the key players in her past and present lives. Jeremiah was the first to welcome her. She realized that her soul group's overall purpose is to wake people up. We are making a difference to those around us. And this purpose is enhanced by the group's ability to see beyond what most people can see. Sounds like the Matrix marketing department to me. <laughs> activities is to increase her soul's healing energy. Danny described working with two members of her soul group, her current sister Lara and a good friend, Antoinette, working with a ball of energy in my hands, but it doesn't touch my hands. It looks a little like a plasma ball. Yeah. This healing energy is then thrown down like snowballs so that it can balance the negative energy created on Earth. This work is enjoyable, fun. Is fun. Dealing with all that powerful positive energy is almost infectious. There is much laughter. It is a focusing of intention, a bit like doing Reiki. That yeah, I mean, it's, it, I think that that's... You know, minus the Reiki part, but I mean, he's even right about that. It's, it's incredible. I mean, you ever try, you know, building a chi ball with your intention, getting that energy, even visualizing that energy in front of you. It's, it's incredible. And that's all, that's all coming from you and the intention that you put in it as a creator being. So, yeah, I mean, I think it's a, it's a great example little obviously different context different kind of experience someone's having but still same thing just a focusing of intention same but thing different background focusing on intention that's what reiki is on earth after this first lbl danny reported that in a fully awake state she received a huge download of information it seemed as if she was being given all the resources necessary to catch up. Six months later, she came for her second LBL. She regressed to a challenging life as Mary, whose brutal husband abused her. She was a simple woman with natural gifts of herbal healing. However, she found that she could not cope with all the abuse and gave up trying to live. This life was packed full of learning about how to be on the receiving end, for in the life before this one, she remembered she had been a cruel male soldier. Her second LBL proved to be a wonderful confirmation of the first. Danny viewed her Akashic records in the library. The records initially appeared as a battered old book and then revealed multidimensional layers of meaning through which she experienced a huge revelation. Multidimensional meanings of bullshit... Now, look, I'm sure we've all had some very checkered past lives. And, you know, we weren't all freaking uh, angels, quote unquote. But, you know, this is how the system works. If, if, if your life script is programmed, and of course, if you have free will. But if your life script is programmed in a certain way, you grow up in a certain environment brought up a certain way and there's violence and all sorts of horrible things going on, well, you're going to be a product of that environment most likely. And that kind of reverts back to what we've talked about on the channel before about early childhood development. If you haven't seen that video, check it out. Uh, we're basically a sponge for our surroundings and information around us from birth to about age six or seven. And it's, proven that how what you are around what you're consuming you know your friends your family your, your extended family your neighbors your teachers all that stuff plays a massive role in your future and how you will act how you will be how you'll look at the world how you'll treat others in that brief little time period from birth to age seven. And it's so blatant that the matrix has it set up in a way that, you know, the deck is stacked against you right from the jump. If you're born in, you know, 
Like, let's just say, like, uh, an elitist family in North Korea, you know, and you're doing all sorts of horrible things. Your, your, your family is doing all sorts of horrible things for the regime, and you're surrounded by that stuff. You're going to think that's okay. You're, you're, you're going to get lost and likely severely programmed into believing that that's okay for whatever BS reason that, you know, North Korea is going to tell you. Anyway, so you get the point. Just uh, check out the early childhood development video if you haven't had a chance. It's really a, a must-see because it, it, it explains a lot about the programming and why we are where we are as a, as a society around the entire realm. Revelation. I've come back to where I'm supposed to be via a different route after a big deviation when I was 17. Editor's note. Akashic in Sanskrit means space, and Indian philosophy uses this term to describe a space representing a universal filing system that records every thought, word, and action in our lifetime. While people in trance may be influenced by a conscious memory of this well-known karmic term, more often than not in hypnosis, LBL subjects recalling spiritual libraries think of these records as their life books, diaries, or as representing a kind of celestial television set for their utilization. Visualizing the spiritual library is a profound experience in higher consciousness in an LBL session. There were further discoveries in the place of life selection, in which she experienced confirmation that her current life as Danny has everything to do with healing. I'm a bit behind where I need to be. I could have reached this point sooner, but I'm on the correct path. My enthusiasm is a gift, a tool to help people. At the end of her second LBL, a padlock was removed from the center of her heart, and she reported this as a huge release. Danny's jigsaw puzzle was finally coming together, creating a cohesive, focused picture. Our initial PLR work provided the impetus for Danny to develop herself further. Her first LBL provided her with confirmation, direction, and resources. The second LBL session highlighted to her that everything was now back on track in this life. In her own words, I could sense that I had finally taken a leap off the edge of the precipice. I could fly or fall, but I didn't know where I was headed. As the sessions progressed, so did her understanding and resolve. And now the jigsaw puzzle is complete. Danny has undergone intensive training to become a qualified cognitive therapist, and now has a full-time practice so that she can make her contribution. All right. So, let's see where we're at here. Yeah, probably almost at an hour and a half. So, yeah, they, these these get a little lengthy. So, yeah, next one's about 25 minutes, half hour. Or so, all right. So, I'm going to just take a break. Uh, just so you know, just with the... This series, I'll probably be taking uh, a break uh, every hour, hour and a half, somewhere around there. How, however, kind of things land up, or land up, end up. Um, so uh, what we'll do is take about a five-minute break, and I will be back with you shortly. So thanks for stopping by and checking out part two, and uh, see you here in about five, six minutes. Thanks again, my friends.
seconds, everybody. Okay, so welcome back, my friends. Just as a reminder, this channel is for educational purposes only or entertainment purposes only, depending on what the law prefers. So, hello, hello. Um, before we go into the second segment of the uh, stream tonight, uh, just as a reminder, I do have a new rumble channel if you're interested in checking it out and i'll also be opening up on odyssey soon as well it's going to be uh laughing at the clown world matrix and you can find a link to that in the description tab streams for that series or that channel should be starting sometime soon it's just kind of a way to kick back have some fun some laughs and uh you know, at the absurdity of the realm. So if you want some lighthearted stuff and, you know, some, some good laughs, uh, I've got a ton of stuff I've been saving for months uh, in preparation for opening this channel. So feel free to join me over there. I also have, uh, you can, again, you can find that in the description tab of on all the platforms. And uh, maybe if a mod happens to hear that, they can maybe drop that as well. I have a Truth in Gaming channel on Rumble and YouTube as, as well. And i uh, got some interesting things coming up with that. Um, the Rumble channel, I, don't, I haven't put anything up there yet, but that'll be streaming, uh, multi-stream between YouTube and Rumble very soon as well. And YouTube's already up and running with that. I have an Instagram, a Twitter. I have an email list if you are cool with signing up for an email list. I promise I'll never, ever, ever sell or share your information with anyone or anything. Um, I despise that type of activity, but it's a good way to stay in touch, and it's one of the very few things that um, I actually have control over. So in case something does happen or things get weird um, on any platform, it's, it's a way for me to reach out and just let you know. And I may, at some point, start to send out regular mailings or, you know, if I can get, like, some sort of assistance from somebody um, to help kind of help things with uh, the email list uh, or even just some social media stuff, uh, I, I may kind of make it a little more... Um, how do you put this? Like just easier way for us to, to stay in touch and you'll, you know, maybe get notifications about the live stream, but you know, you got to pay for all these mailings and all that stuff, but it, it may be worth it. Um, especially when I know notifications aren't being received and stuff. So, um, that's a bummer. Also, don't forget to hit the bell for all and subscribe to, uh, this channel if you're new or interested in the channel and not already subscribed. I also have a backup channel here, and then uh, that's Forever Conscious Research 2. And then uh, final two things, or final three things, is I have, um, what else is there? Oh yeah, this the main channel here is available on YouTube, Odyssey and Rumble. I multi-stream every single time to all three at once, so today, uh, you can watch the channel on YouTube, Odyssey, or Rumble. So hello to everybody on all the platforms. Appreciate you all. And the last thing is, is I do have memberships available if you're interested, where you can get some extra content every month. 
and we usually meet the last Sunday of every month, and there's a big backlog of information and uh, streams for you to check out if that's something you're looking to get. And um, also, if you're interested in supporting the channel through Super Chats or Stream Elements or um, Hyper Chats on Odyssey or or through um, whatever they call it on Rumble, it's always appreciated but never expected. And uh, so thank you. And thank you to all the members out there who are already supporting the channel and anyone else who donates. I appreciate you very much. Um, it really helps... Um, with my health bill, with my health related bills. You know, it's, uh, it's so weird with, um, with money and truth. It's just so freaking weird. It's like, you can do anything else like sell art and do all sorts of other things. But when it comes to, you know, this type of activity, it's not allowed. And, you know, if you, if you had to sit in my shoes with dealing with, um, ev like virtually everything not being covered by insurance and it's all out of pocket because basically the health ailment I have is actively covered up and, and discounted and uh it's it's just shitty so and if you know you want to go to a natural path or anything like that everything costs money you know i mean, let me just say this i'm just kind of rambling here i'm not trying to guilt trip anybody i'm just pointing it out it's like it's incredible when uh you see that it's like if you only knew what, you know, I have to live with every day, you know, the, all the issues related to Lyme disease, um, trust me, I wouldn't wish it on anybody. It's horrible. But I'm still, you know, better than I was in the past. Still not, not, not good, but improvement's improvement, right? So, anyways, uh. It's just been a rough couple, like, six weeks, I would say. It's just been with flare-ups and stuff, so I haven't been maybe a little grouchy and stuff. So I apologize um, if it's coming off wrong, but um, just know I appreciate each and every one of you, whether you're watching, sharing the content, supporting the channel, you know, just being here and, and commenting and and liking the video stuff like that all small things help and uh it's much appreciated so thank you all right let's move along to the next step i think it's case five, five. Life choices and moving on uh, is that five life choices and moving on by sophia kramer new york city and kiel germany International instructor and author specializing in hypnotherapy, regression, family systems, trauma, and reconciliation. In my LBL work, I often work with people who are grieving the passing of a loved one. They frequently wish to make contact with their deceased loved ones in spirit and seek answers on how they feel after their physical death. They will often feel an urge to have an exchange with them in order to be able to move on in their own lives. This can be a very healing experience that brings closure and acceptance, often paired with a blessing from the person in spirit for the one here on Earth, who still has to conquer the challenges of life. Then there are people who come for an LBL session because they wonder if they are on the right path and who want to know their life's purpose or gain insight into specific questions about their career, their family, or important life changes. Here, I will share with you my experience of an LBL session I conducted in South Africa that exemplifies the positive changes that happen when we follow our soul's purpose. I am on my way to Johannesburg, where I have been invited to conduct LBL sessions. South Africa is a country of breathtaking beauty, full of rich culture, traditions, and originality. The country still struggles with its changes and adjustments after apartheid's injustice and imbalance. I feel that with my background in systemic therapy and regression work, especially the life-between-lives regression work and my passion for it, 
I can assist here and there with the healing of individuals and the core of this amazing country. Andrew is a South African man in his mid-30s. We had a phone consultation in which he stated that he'd had some experience with hypnosis, but this was many years ago. Meeting with him in my colleague's office, I see Andrew... Ah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I lowered the volume for the music. I'm so sorry. Oh my god. Hold on. Okay, I'm gonna back it up. Ah, I'm so sorry. Alright. <laughs> I'm not gonna do that again. Forget that. Alright, so here we go. Five. Life Choices and Moving On By Sophia Kramer, New York City and Kiel, Germany International instructor and author specializing in hypnotherapy, regression, family systems, trauma, and reconciliation. In my LBL work, I often work with people who are grieving the passing of a loved one. They frequently wish to make contact with their deceased loved ones in spirit and seek answers on how they feel after their physical death. They will often feel an urge to have an exchange with them in order to be able to move on in their own lives. This can be a very healing experience that brings closure and acceptance, often paired with a blessing from the person in spirit for the one here on earth who still has to conquer the challenges of life. Then there are people who come for an LBL session because they wonder if they are on the right path and who want to know their life's purpose or gain insight into specific questions about their career, their family, or important life changes. Here, I will share with you my experience of an LBL session I conducted in South Africa that exemplifies the positive changes that happen when we follow our soul's purpose. I am on my way to Johannesburg, where I have been invited to conduct LBL sessions. South Africa is a country of breathtaking beauty, full of rich culture, traditions, and originality. The country still struggles with its changes and adjustments after apartheid's injustice and imbalance, I feel that with my background in systemic therapy and regression work, especially the life between lives regression work and my passion for it, I can assist here and there with the healing of individuals and the core of this amazing country. Andrew is a South African man in his mid-30s. We had a phone consultation in which he stated that he'd had some experience with hypnosis, but this was many years ago. Meeting with him in my colleague's office, I see Andrew as a straightforward and extroverted man who describes himself as a go-getter and is successful in his work and focused on achievements and material comfort. He is married and has a small son. He doesn't observe any spiritual or religious practice and doesn't describe himself as particularly spiritual. But he is open-minded and believes that our session will shed light on his questions. Andrew and his wife are concerned about the future in South Africa, especially about the safety of their son and their second child, who is about to arrive. Even though they are financially settled and have a large extended family and many friends, they consider leaving the country. South Africa's future is the biggest concern for Andrew, aside from an inquiry about his life purpose and questions about some fears of failure and rejection. Andrew responds very well to the induction and to the relaxation. His body reacts fine to images of safety and to affirmations of security. He gets so deep and relaxed that his voice is very soft so that I have to be very mindful in understanding his responses. Regressed to childhood, experiencing a blissful moment as baby Andrew, he feels as if he is really there. He is the little baby, responding with a baby voice, bubbly laughter, and body movements that reflect this moment. It is always an astounding feeling to witness the process of my clients, to sit with them and their experience and to tune in with the moment. On one hand, to sit in my place as a facilitator for their experience, and on the other, to sit back to let them fully experience it from within. Baby Andrew is able to recall many details of his surroundings, which the adult Andrew would not have been able to recollect with his everyday rational mind. This is especially nice for him, since he stated issues with his mom in our initial interview, and here, as a baby, he is able to recall constructive recollections, which I anchor for him as a resource for the future. In his mother's womb, Andrew was able to answer many questions regarding his body choice, his soul, and integration with the body. He realizes that his spiritual character is lighter, less serious, and more carefree. I ask him if he would like to pull in some of this carefree energy into his physical body, and he agrees. Then something astounding happens. Andrew starts to breathe heavily, pulling the energy down into his body, huffing and puffing, turning red and violet. 
I tell his body to accept it, to integrate it into each and every cell of his being. Then he relaxes with a glow on his face, feeling very happy. After Andrew completes his download of carefree and joyful soul energy, the next step would have been to guide him to a past life, preferably his most... Okay, so completes his download, his download. So the information's being recognized, transferred. Um, you know, and, and um, there was someone who left a comment uh, just really quickly... Jim says, I believe I've read two for sure or three of his books, and I've always felt they were a little too fantastic. See, I, I think with anything, you know, you're going to, this is one of those areas like regret. So just bear with me, guys. It's going to be a minute here. Um, with past life regressions, life between lives, th this type of information uh it really is about the data pattern. So the, the beauty is that you can take what Newton says and you can cross-reference it with other practitioners and you're, you're going to see the same types of patterns. So that's really what it's all about. Now, I think with anything, you're, you're always going to have a, a, a possibility of a huckster coming in or something, uh, you know, like uh, maybe some regressions that are unbelievable or something like that. But you really don't hear anything like, oh, the classic stuff like, oh, Cleopatra. I was Cleopatra or this or that. Like they really, I mean, they're, they're pretty, most of the time they're pretty basic, you know. And um, so I take that into account. I take into account that. You can cross-reference it with other practitioners, uh, either under Michael Newton's um, uh, method of retrieving past lives or other ones like uh, Weiss or you know, and on, all that stuff. I mean, there's there's plenty out there. So that's kind of the, the litmus test for me. Now, just like with anything in life, there's, there's always a possibility that there's going to be some cases that sneak by that seem authentic and they might not be, but, uh, really it's about the consistency. Um, and so that, that's the, the best answer I can give. Uh, one thing you, you'll never see me <clears throat> covering on the channel is like, uh, channeling. <laughs> not one thing you'll never hear me covering the channel is channeling. You know, I just kind of, um, stay, away from all that but um this is its own method you know hypnosis uh to retrieve past lives uh isn't new and it wasn't something that newton discovered yeah he discovered it for himself but it, it goes way back so it's not even a new concept because it's been around a long time and um, the book I was mentioning earlier in the stream even talks about some of those examples. I'll try and find the, the name for you, but cause it's a great book, but, uh, and that, that one's, I think from like the late 1800s, early 1900s. And speaking of the late 1800s, that kind of time period, like the spiritualist movement and stuff like that, there's a lot of great stuff that came out back then. And it's like, they're not all lying. You know, they're, they're just not kind of like with end of years, like, you know, you have uh, the Christian Broadcasting Network posting NDEs. I stay very clear of those because I know, like, there's a specific motivation to have certain narratives on the channel. And it's just kind of like being able to use the, your, the best discernment possible. And in the end, what we do see is consistency in the patterns and... Um, they, they just can't all be lying. So that's, or making up things, uh, or embellishing. I just don't think, uh, that's going on, but that's just my opinion. But, uh, you know, I, I hear you. Uh, I, I really don't like Newton's overall conclusions. They don't sit well with me, but that's cause <laughs> my, uh, outlook. And I know many of us here, our outlook is through the lens of the soul trap. So it's, inherently deceptive but that doesn't make what is experienced uh 
less valuable or less authentic because uh, again it, it it lines it's very very consistent so anyways uh, that's my opinion but yeah no it's a, it's a good comment and uh, and understandable completes his download of carefree and joyful soul energy the next step would have been to guide him to a past life preferably his most recent past life but Andrew's soul is eager to go right away into the spirit realm he rises up, seeing some stretches of land below him, and experiences a strong pull from above. He perceives a tube of light, is pulled higher and higher, and trusts his divine help while leaving the heavy physical residue behind him. This light feels very comfortable as the space around him gets brighter and brighter. Following this pull into the bright light, his face becomes very happy, the sensation grows stronger and stronger, and then suddenly Andrew becomes very peaceful very quiet, and tears start to run down his cheeks. Editor's Note The portal through which souls pass into the gateway of the spirit world is commonly called the tunnel effect. Bright lights are usually an accompanying manifestation. Andrew states that he can see a light being who greets him with an embrace, enveloping him with loving energy. He is here for me. He is like a big brother. He is my guide, Andrew exclaims. Andrew connects to Zeko, whose name he can recall and spell out for me. He is able to recognize his guide's energy, realizing that he had indeed felt it before. We then find out that Zeko calls Andrew by his immortal name of Estrell. Zeko is always with me, Andrew states with conviction. We communicate with telepathic feelings. And then it happens again. Andrew Estrell starts to download his guide's energy into his physical body, this one being even more dramatic than the first download. I witness him breathing heavily, pumping his body up with that loving, powerful force, his skin color turning red and violet again, and his body swelling up, tears running down his face, before becoming quiet and blissful once more. Zeko communicates with Andrew Estrell, telling him how pleased he is with his performance in this life, and that his greatest achievement in this life is being kind, honest, and simply being himself. Zeko states that he has been with Andrew Estrell for a long time, throughout many difficult lives, and that he is proud of how well Andrew Estrell is doing in comparison to other past lives. Over and over in my work, I see that there is no judgment in the spirit world. We, in our human condition, critique ourselves and others, but our guides and counsel never judge us. Andrew is a man who is often hard on himself. He experienced a strict mother and often feels he doesn't accomplish enough. He struggles with self-esteem issues, and here in the spirit world, his guide assures him that it is enough to just be himself. He it's just enough. Struggling with self-esteem and, 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 you know, it's the fear, guilt, shame aspect rearing its ugly head yet again. You know, Give the guy a break, for Christ's sake. This guide assures him that it is enough to just be himself. Yeah, yeah, it's just, just enough. Just enough. Even though you're, you know, miserable, it's just just enough loose for us. <laughs> Otherwise, we'll have to ramp it up a little bit. He is his hardest judge, and that we receive compassion and understanding in the spirit world. Estrell moves even higher. I am standing in a room... It is like a semicircle, lots of light. There are other beings. They are all dressed like Zeko, with brown robes. There is a lot of love and humor. Estrell can count five council members, and Zeko is right there with him, standing in the background. Now they are all sitting down on the floor, and it is getting dark. I see a rounded roof. They ask me to sit with them. They are facing me. It is humbling for me to sit with them. I begin asking a few questions directed to his council members, but Estrell states, They are hunched over. They are getting very serious. Oh. Suddenly, he starts crying heavily. They show me Africa's stage today. They show me a picture of it. I feel the deep pain of it. I could see this was very agonizing for Andrew. And then he continued. They tell me I can leave South Africa if I want. 
Easy. It would be very easy. I asked Andrew if he would feel guilty if he decided to go away and leave others behind in South Africa, and he responds, No, not at all. They must do their destiny as much as I must do mine. I don't have fear. We all choose our own fate. He is still breathing heavily and is deeply moved by this. With his heart wide open, Andrew sends healing from this high source to South Africa. He embraces his own path and sends love and healing to all the human beings, animals, plants, and creatures in South Africa. Editor's Note Placement of these meetings may give us an indication of a soul's developmental stage. Zekko is also standing in the circle now, smiling at him. Andrew tells me he wanted to show me this lesson. Then one of the members in the middle of the circle communicates telepathically with Andrew Estrell. You can leave it behind comfortably, but go with gratitude. There is lots of good in South Africa. Be a messenger for the good of this country when you go out into the new world. Andrew Estrell sees the planet Earth from above. I ask if he can tell where his new home will be. He responds, All I can see is Australia. My client is zooming in, exploring more details about Australia, and his hey, counsel mate. continues to give him images and messages. Andrew Estrell still needs to cry and grieve, but he starts to focus more on what he receives from his counsel. During this period, the impression of his counsel starts to shift. Andrew explains that, these are the same beings. Also, Zeko is here, but they are not wearing the dark robes anymore. It is very bright. They are wearing long golden robes. It is still a semicircle, but bright, and there is a podium. On the left are the more important ones. The one in the middle is the most significant one. I mean, do, do you see the level of BS going on here? I mean, it's it's... This is the type of crap that pops up over and over. It, it, you know, you have the council, you know, and, and it's slightly adjusted or, or tweaked for, for the individual and maybe on what they have to work on as far as karma or what, whatever the case may be. Um, they have to work on empathy or love or, or hate or whatever the case may be. And it just... It's like, when is enough enough? Why is it always never enough? How many lifetimes does someone have to go through in order to, you know, uh, say enough is enough and, and, and bail and get out of here? It's because of all the, all the trickery going on that we keep falling into this. Yeah. On the left are the more important ones. Yeah, more the important. The one in the middle is the most significant one. Even the podium is very radiant. It is out of glass, or rather out of crystal. The ceiling is also out of crystal. Zeko is with me, behind me. It is like a university, but a more formal setting, similar to a courtroom. With uh, light. Similar to a courtroom. Well, we know there's a life review, right? And <laughs> it's just the freaking council. Who are these creeps? And what gives them the right to be getting up all in our business? Courtroom. With light beings on the podium. They feel like wise judges to me. Wise judges. Editor's note. Even under hypnosis, the human mind tries to make sense of what is being seen, remembered using information already available through experience and prior knowledge. A subject may attach those references to the images they see at first before they allow the truer meaning to come into their mind. With the commencing of a council meeting, the formality of the setting can sometimes lead certain souls into misinterpreting what is in store for them. One would think the memories of previous council hearings Here comes after excuse. other lives would kick in immediately. But there are souls for whom this is not always true. Because of their conscious preconditioning on Earth, some LBL clients initially think they see a courtroom and judges waiting for them as they enter the chamber. For thousands of years, religious dogma and superstition around the world sure, has sure. predicted we are due for punishment and retribution for our sins at the time of death. This is all false. 
The yeah. spirit world is a space of love and forgiveness. <sighs> oh my God, it just makes me sick. If you listen to his books, or read his books, I should say, and then, of course, you look at NDEs and all this stuff. There is, like, across the board, there is this endless excuse making for uh, retribution, karma, sinning, all this stuff. I mean, it just pops up all the time. And yet, we are always, always, always told that, oh, we're judging ourselves and it's no big deal and blah, blah, blah. It's the same old song and dance. But yet, why would you need to, if, you know, if, if, if you don't, I mean, point blank in, in Newton's other books and in NDEs, you know, like if you do something wrong, you feel that experience through the lens, through the experience of the person or individual that you offended or hurt as if you, you know, as if you're them experiencing whatever harshness you dished out. It's just, what's that about? How is that type of thing facilitated? So there is judgment, there is karma, there is sinning. All that stuff is obviously real. But it's in the... It's real in the ba in the basis of the illusion of the matrix. Because we continually decide to get mixed up in it, right? Um, what ha Again, what happens, I know I mentioned this earlier and many, many other times, but what happens if you say enough is enough? I'm not going to interact with any of this stuff. I'm just moving on and that's it. I'm making my own decision. I'm not going to talk or deal with or interact in any way shape or form with any of you and i'm out peace get me out of here or not get me out of here i'm getting myself out of here through my own intention and never looking back what's wrong with trying that right like uh i don't i don't see the incessant desire to connect with something that you know you came from here on earth it's related to the astral realm and it's and it has all these atrocities and wackiness going on what about the individual kind of we can go back to what we were talking about earlier with you know you have a life script you're born in north korea you know you're born like a middle upper class elitist type family that you know has to commit atrocities on those in uh, those uh, the population who are not towing the regime's line I mean seriously that's that's you're if you're being set up to 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 be an offender to be parasitic karma sinning judgment all that stuff aside that's a setup that's a complete setup and this is a system that cannot be pleased i know i say the same things all the time but it, this is a perfect example of it right in our faces anyways the first thing souls see in the chamber are the elders waiting for them usually sitting on a dais and perhaps in a semicircle these positions can vary but at first this scene can give one the sense of a courtroom with authority figures. In this case, Andrew recovers rather quickly and realizes the elders are not wearing dark robes. He also states they are smiling at him. In council meetings, the elders may be smiling or have a more serious look to the soul appearing in front of them, but it is not long before all souls know the meeting is designed to help them evaluate the past and plan for the future. He feels in tune with the judges. It is not bad at all. It's almost fun. They are eager to share. They say, do not procrastinate. Do it. Go. The door of opportunity is open now. It will not always stay open. He looks at their faces. They smile warmly and again give him a picture of Australia. It looks bright and positive. Then they give him a picture of South Africa. 
It looks like it is covered with a gray veil. At this point, I ask Andrew a few more questions regarding this life change, and he continues to receive messages in the form of visual pictures, kinesthetic sensations, and sentences. People will come to help you and give you guidance. Just trust it. It will develop. Editor's Note In this case, both sensory and visual images of South Africa and Australia were created by Andrew's counsel and downloaded into his mind. This was done during a deep LBL trance state to provide him with current information and to assist Andrew with making choices in present linear earth time. By no means should the listener conclude that this sort of counsel coaching with current decision-making will occur with everyone having an LBL session. Counsel coaching. But a variety of other clues are often available for our consideration. This case does, however, illustrate an important spiritual phenomenon in that we also have the capacity as souls in the afterlife to view past and even potential future events in terms of our participation. This review process is designed for growth. It seems to me that the science of quantum mechanics is only now catching up with what our LBL hypnosis subjects have been reporting for years. Scientists are learning that subatomic particles, acting under the influence of vibrational energy waves, both record and store all images, animate and inanimate, on Earth. Events represent patterns of pure vibrational energy, so that no human experience is ever lost that cannot be recovered for analysis in the timeless afterlife. Apparently, we leave fingerprint-like impressions of our own energy in all geographic locations where our presence has been permanently recorded. These energy waves also have the capacity to create a multitude of alternative patterns for possible future events in our lives. The Council chose not to show Andrew what he might expect in the future for two reasons. The future is not set in stone and also to even touch on what might happen in the future during Andrew's current life would preempt both free will and self-discovery. Even so, as we see with other cases in this book, past, present, and future exist in one continuum of now-time in the spirit world. Then Andrew Estrell's council members give him a deep teaching. They confront him with his fear of rejection and failure. He suddenly feels himself transported back in the womb of his mother while continuing to have the connection to above with his counsel. They show him that it was his choice to conquer this theme in this lifetime. He realizes that his mother also felt rejected by her mother. Okay, let's just talk about, you know, it was his choice to do this, his choice, yes. All right, but one of the things that becomes clear between pre-birth memories, life between lives, past life regressions, the, this kind of area that pops up. What we see is like a, there are beings, entities, we can, you know, they could be the council, they could be guides, teachers, they pop up and are aiding in life selection. And while, yeah, you may get, you know, multiple choices to, to pick from different careers and this and that there is an entity there trying to help you select where you're going to go, what you're going to do and you know, the soul group thing and, and who you're connected with all that stuff. Again, ask yourself why, you know, so, so how much of the decision making is ours in that scenario? I, I, I think it's manipulated on a grand scale. And of course, a lot of it has to do with the fear, guilt, shame, or, or the, the belief system that like, oh, I need to work on this or I need to work on that. Well, you know, the, the counsel or the teacher or the guide is going to step in and say, oh, well, you know, yeah, you need to do this. And so we may recommend this life script. And then, and then sometimes there's this big production. This is one of the other things that pops up where you see someone picking like an overbearing life and that's because and, and the reasoning is because they want to wrap this whole thing up as quickly as possible by taking on more burdens more suffering that's the that's the translation they want to take on more suffering more burden 
in an effort to end this cycle quicker. I mean, if that doesn't tell you something, I don't know what does. <laughs> I mean, because it pops up a lot. They show him that it was his choice to conquer this theme in this lifetime. He realizes that his mother also felt rejected by her mother and that she was the perfect mom for giving him the chance to overcome his issues of failure and rejection. He is able to feel forgiveness and compassion for his mom. She didn't know. She made mistakes in life. She and I had the same problem. Forgiveness. That is the only way. His counsel makes him feel and see the circumstances in his life. Andrew realizes that already as a fetus in the womb, it was apparent that this was one of his lessons his eternal soul wanted to accomplish. There is no such thing as rejection. Andrew says, it is not about you. Don't take it personally. If the other There is no such thing as rejection, but yet when you're here, how many children can be rejected by their father or their mother? I mean, or grandparents or adopted families come on come on again the disconnect from what's actually happening here and the excuses made because everything's kind of padded and covered up over there in the astral is absurd it's completely absurd andrew says it is not about you don't take it personally. If the other people can't be in my space, it is about them, not about me. I am supposed to be yeah, it's more about me. Them. Yeah. And I have to lighten up. I am too serious. I need to be more of my true self. No one will reject myself. Mm. Myself is connected to my eternal me. Yourself is connected to the freaking louche factory, unfortunately. And your eternal me is being suppressed. Brand. Considering that he has already pulled the energy of his teachings into his physical body twice, I ask him if he wants to do that again. And yes, before I even finished my question, one more time Andrew receives a download of his newly recouped information. After this, it is evident that the session is coming to an end. In LBL work, it is really remarkable. You feel you know when it is done. The energy shifts and the session comes to an end. Andrew has one more glimpse of his counsel with Zeko present and feels a deep healing and rejuvenation in his body. He takes that in for a while before I bring him back to the present moment. This session shows several things beautifully. First, a person who is not an observer of a religious or spiritual practice who doesn't meditate or do something similar can go very deep and receive lots of information in visual, kinesthetic, and auditory ways. Sometimes these messages are a lot to take in, and they come in downloads. Since the information is a lot to process for the mind and body, the download gives the human body and mind the information in the form of a time release. This can be easier for some to tolerate. It is also interesting how the Council can assist us with major life choices and learning. Ah, Here we saw how the Council... See, they can assist with major life choices. They can assist... Roll them on out. Come on, let's get some... Let, we need some assistance up in here. See, this is how they insert themselves. Major life choices and learning. Here we saw how the council, through graphic imaging, brought out the bigger message about the nation of South Africa. Two months later, I heard from Andrew. He, his wife, and his son were in Brisbane, Australia. They took six weeks to travel extensively to receive guidance and information. He was excited guidance. to report that they'd already found the neighborhood they had decided to move to. About two weeks after that, we planned to meet for lunch in Sydney, since I was also there for work purposes. <laughs> Break the spell. All of them were very happy about the experiences they'd had during their travels through Australia. Andrew shared that he felt such a shift since his LBL session that he is able to trust the messages he received and follows through with all the plans that were established with the help of his guide and counsel. He said to me, I am amazed at how easily everything falls into place. Since my LBL session, things seem to run perfectly, as if I am guided all the way. Many doors have opened. I've made new friends who are able to connect me with people who are competent to help me professionally. 
Through this, I already have several new opportunities and am looking at different options for my own business here in Australia. It is amazing to me how life changes when you follow your soul's purpose. Perhaps. Well, what about all the individuals who, who don't have access to that? What about those who don't find hypnotic regression, life between lives, what, hypnosis in general, right? Those who don't connect maybe through some other means, another experiencer type. What about them? What about that? That's basically the vast majority of the entire world, the entire realm. What about them? Oh, no big deal. No big deal. It's all right. Screw them. You know, we're, we're the lucky few. See, again, a, a disconnect. You know, it, it's about, yeah, like, so for these things that may help a, a small group, and that's great, you know, if, if I'm totally for it, I think it's important. Like, if, if you can find someone and they're the right fit for you as an individual, go for it especially when it comes to like fears, phobias, um, questioning things, uh, it may be beneficial, but just be careful with who you're dealing with. And, um, you know, again, the, the rest of the population, eh, no big deal. I guess they'll just have to reincarnate again to get to discover, you know, a past life or two that they had and what then do it all over again. Come on. Life changes when you follow your soul's purpose. Perhaps this is also due to Andrew's more positive attitude toward life. His wife states how safe the environment is for their children and how many possibilities they will have with the educational system there. It will be much better for our family life and for our children, she says. Even though they see so many possibilities in Australia, Andrew is committed to his task, which he received in his LBL. I will tell the people about all the good and incredibly beautiful things South Africa has to offer. I will continue to be a messenger of our country and bring the best of South Africa to our new home. I made a commitment to Zeko that I would do this, and with fulfilling this promise, I follow my soul's purpose. All right, so just want to... Give a big thank you to Emil for joining the Last Timers Club. I appreciate you. Thanks so much. Welcome aboard. You can find a full members list, members playlist on the home section or the playlist section of the channel. And thanks again for your support. Appreciate you. And Spirit, thank you for the very kind and generous super chat. I appreciate you as well, my friend. Thank you so much. Okay, so uh, let me just see here. Might have time for one more. Uh, let's see how long he eh. it's a little bit of a long one yeah i think um i'll probably leave it there tonight sorry i you know if it was a shorter one I, i'd do it but it's uh it might take like another 45 minutes to an hour so i think we'll we'll kind of leave things there um so thank you everybody appreciate it and um Look forward to going over some uh, more cases. Uh, just as a reminder, we'll probably meet either Thursday or Friday, and then again on Sunday. All right, so keep an eye out. I should have a schedule out tomorrow, Wednesday, August 16th, or at the latest, the 17th, uh, at least for the next... Uh, you know, probably for most of the series, and then there'll be links available for at least one or two of the streams uh, on all the platforms. So if you want to save the links and set your alarm or set a reminder or something, that'll be possible if you want to join us. So uh, thank you to each and every one of you, and I look forward to seeing you again soon, okay? So take care of yourselves. Don't work too hard. And uh, see you soon. Thank you.